40. Um, first uh, thing is to approve the April 10th, 2024 minutes. You're not Andrew Brown. I make a motion to. What's that? You're not Andrew Brown, Chair. Mm. You're Jones. Oh, yeah, we're, I didn't want to see that. Oh, yeah, you're right. Where is it? So, three oh, yeah. should be Jones. Name, no. <laughs> I'll stick with the generic last name I have. <laughs> Smith Jones. I got it right up here, but yeah, yeah. funny. Awesome. Good Thank catch. You. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. So, entertain a motion to approve the minutes amended with Andrew Jones instead of Andrew Brown on number three. So moved. Mm -hmm. Second. Okay. All right. Okay, Aaron. So who we Go. need those? We need we need those motions and seconds. Yeah. For okay. Minutes. And so what I need is people to motions grab their name tags. Okay. Facing out. But I don't think I'm voting. Sure. Thanks, guys. Um. Okay, is there any public comment? Does anybody want to make any comments before we start? Then we'll <coughs> move on to the draft of norms. Okay. So you should all have a hard copy in front of you. It looks like this on one side and the draft on the other. So the norms that are up for um, a tweaking and or a Approval are um, on the side that says draft. I just included the other piece because the work that you did last meeting, um, I wanted to record that so you would have a sense of what we had talked about and how I came up with those. We did them on poster paper and we did them in small groups. Remember that. So these were what I put together. You can do with them as you please. And if I miss something, please say something, and we'll put that in there. All right, that looks good to me. So. Yeah. Yeah. Are they good? Chris is still looking at it. still working. Mary, I do need edit access. If you want me to be able to write in that. If, you, if I don't need to write in it and I'm just projecting, that's fine. But. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and give her access. I meant to get, I meant to go. Do you want to run the official parts? Um, sure. Uh, whatever. <laughs> whatever. You sure. Okay, so I jump in. entertain a motion to approve the drafted norms. So moved. Right. You want me to second again? Okay, I'll do that again. All right. Just writing our names. Right? Any discussion? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Great. Okay. We have norms. All right, so the big work of today is about um, the homework for the... <laughs> so, Jeff, did you get the homework assignment? Oh, look at that. <laughs> you have... Hi. Hello. Hello. Come sit with me. Um, do you have a copy of the Articles of Agreement somewhere? I have only what was sent to me. Okay, we'll get you all <laughs> caught up, and you might get doubles. Okay. But rather than spend any time trying to figure out what you have and what you don't have, we'll just I have an extra copy. Oh, excellent! Chris Gray, so Jeff Clayton. One, I ran one off on single sided <laughs> instead of right. double sided. I cheated. So. <laughs> no. So the homework assignment was the the charge of the committee is to um, to basically uh, determine where where we are in um, meeting the, uh, the goals of the Articles of Agreement. And so the homework was to go and read them carefully and to record yourself or you know whatever, uh, what the questions were that you would have in terms of how we might assess how we're doing as a, as a new district. And so what my plan is and what um, Emily is working on, of course, we have this thing in front, right? <laughs> no, I can get that out. Well, that's my bag. Um, is to we'll have a protocol to put things up on the on the screen, 
and um, and just list out what are those questions. And then what we'll do is we'll break into two groups after we've done that, and one will work with me and one will work with Mary, and we'll go back and um, determine, you know, talk about who, what is the information specifically that we need, who might have it, how might we gather it. Is this through a forum? Is this through a survey? Is this through calling central office? Andrew, you were saying that there, there's a lot of data sitting that might be of interest to us that we don't need to spend a lot of time gathering, um, and uh, so on and so forth. So before we do that, I'm just going to ask us to do another quick round of introductions since Jeff is new, and I'm, I'm definitely reading the next <laughs> I'll get better. But anyway, so I'm Suzette Bollard. I'm a... 45, 44 plus year retired educator, former superintendent and colleague of Jamie um, Canarni. And Jamie just asked me to come down and, and uh, lead this group to help you get the answers that you need. So that's who I am. And I am Nancy Pejui. I am also a retired teacher. And uh, yeah, I'm on the school board. The and RDD you represent board. what town? Bethel. Bethel. No, I'm Andrew Bell, and I'm not retired. <laughs> <laughs> elementary so principal. I also live in Bethel. I have a child in Bethel Elementary and a child in the high school. And that's my claim to fame. All right. Sandy Russo, Royalton. Let's see. Oh, God. A retired med tech. And I still sub at the school. I worked for 15 years as a Title I reading teaching assistant. I still sub because I love the school. My kids went there, my husband went there, and he was on the school board for 12 years. So I invested interest. That's awesome. <coughs> uh, I'm Jeff Clayton. I'm the community-based learning coordinator over at WRVHS. Uh, I live in Chelsea, and <coughs> I guess you'll learn more as we go. You have kids. <laughs> I have kids. Um, none of my kids have gone to South Royalton uh, or WRVHS. I'm still stuck. South Royalton still is in my head, so and sometimes it comes out. Um, <clears throat> but my younger kids will probably be coming down. Um, I'm Emily Miller, uh, middle school science teacher here in Bethel. I live in Bethel, and my kids are currently students at the high school. Chris Gray. <coughs> uh, I work here in the elementary as a custodian. Uh, I have ha I have one child that's graduating this year from the high school. I had one that graduated last year, um, and I also live in Bethel. I'm Andrew Jones. I'm from Royalton. I'm the chair of the school board, and I've got uh, three kids. I'm Aaron Slater. I have uh, two kids in the South Royalton Elementary School, and I work as a glass artist. We're relatively new transplants, so like this is like our third year here. So I'm, this, you know, I'm kind of like the outside <laughs> perspective in some way. I'm the recent transplant, and. Um, my wife, Francie, works as the farm to school coordinator, so some of you might know her. I'm Mary Shell. I'm the community school coordinator for White River Valley Supervisory Union. Um, prior to that, I was a high school social studies teacher in a couple schools in Vermont for about 28 years. And I have three grown kids, and none of them went to WRVSU schools. I'm Leah Ferranti. I go to the high school in Royalton, and I have a younger brother here in the middle school. Nice. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, so what do we got? <laughs> so, what I'd like to do here, and Emily, do you want to trans? Do you want to scribe, or you want? I can. can I do, you you want good me to? with that? Sure. I can type. That's fine. Yeah. Um, I gotta not put myself with my back to this. <laughs> yeah. Next time. So the only thing, what we're going to do is we're going to decide what the questions are that we found, or the, that's the things that spoke to us as we were going through the, um, the document. And we'll go around and give one idea from each person. And when, um, as you go around, and we'll go around a second time, if somebody has already mentioned your idea that's still on your list, 
then you need to cross that out because we don't need to hear it again. Mm -hmm. So you have to keep track of as people are putting up their ideas to make sure that you're not going to duplicate them. And we will go around and around and around until everybody is out of ideas. Um, what's important, Emily, is that we do number them. Okay. Uh, it just makes it easier later <laughs> if we're trying to figure out where we are. And then after we've done that um, and are satisfied with that, then I'm going to split us into two groups. One will work with Mary and one will work with me. Um, and uh, we'll go here. How and where we get the answers to these questions. So that would include uh, what the, the stakeholder groups are, who are we asking, are these in the form of a forum, are these in the form of a, a survey, or you know, how, how are we going to get this information, is it central office, that kind of stuff. And then, if we can, who are the people who are responsible for those pieces? Now this may not be completely filled in based on what it is we're trying to figure out. And due dates, I think it's important to begin to, to put those in place, whether those actually get put in place this week or at our next meeting is a question, but I think we have order to keep on, we got a lot to do between now and September. And a lot of it is in this, this pre-stuff, we have to gather this stuff. So working on questions and, and, and uh, 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 how we're going to run forums and who we're going to talk to and how we're going to reach them is part of uh, what is time consuming, but then once that gets rolling we'll have the information that we need and then we can actually put a report together. So, who would like to start? Andrew. Well, before we start, sure. just I, I do think it would be good to have a little discussion about what kind of our end goal is. Okay. Um, since you know, I think I'm still a little fuzzy as to are we just looking at the articles of agreement or are we kind of looking at the state of the district as a whole? And, you know, like we talked last time about it would be nice to kind of provide updated information about some of these things. Like, you know, a lot, the, the articles of agreement had that introductory thing that had a lot of the data and stuff like that about right. the district. So are we going to be producing something similar to kind of provide an updated overview of where things are? And so just kind of a night, like, I wonder if it would be good to yeah. have a more clear end goal and then we <coughs> go through questions or go through questions and then decide on what we want to produce out of those questions or, I don't know. Well, so the task force, the, the way it was set up, at your boarding, <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, is to get a sense as to the community and how the merger is going. So my understanding of it was how have we met the goals of the merger? Did we meet the um, the goals, I guess, or the expectations of the merger? Are people satisfied with it? Um, you know, really, what is the what is the state of the school right now in comparison to what your voters voted on? Now, there have been some things that didn't happen at all, and that's that's okay, but in, as part of a report around that, I would think that that would be important to put in if, if that was the goal. Um, and it is somewhat of a, uh, a report on the state of the merger of the school district now. But I think what... Um, I wasn't at this meeting when this happened, so... <laughs> Um, there may be initial articles of agreement work and then work to engage the community on what is working and not working. So I think that um, I think that might come out of the questions. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess you know I, I can think of some things that I would like to get answers to that aren't necessarily you know things like you know we have did have a hundred and. 30 people or something like that come out to the annual meeting. And mm -hmm. one of the things, as we're going out to all the stakeholders, it'd be really nice to know, like, why didn't people come out? Like, is it, you know, so that, that'd be something that I'd be really interested in finding out, but it's not really anything related to the Article of Agreement. Um, so, well, you know, I don't... That's important. Did yeah. other people have similar yeah, experiences? I think the communication in that area was a little confusing, at least for me. Sure. From the front of the town report to, the art, it was in the articles correctly, right. but you, we took it as you could vote the next day. Oh. 
I think even asking the question, are you a registered voter? Have you ever voted before? Um, yeah, I didn't necessarily yeah, want to get into that, yeah, this specific I conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I, think, I think like getting into what the barriers are. Yeah, I would say, yeah. Well, related to that, and I think this is district-wide, like Tunbridge and Chelsea as well, understanding that just you can't go in on the day of the budget vote and start talking about you know major changes and i think and i'm assuming that you probably have the same thing people are calling for a revote on the budget and stuff and somehow can, how can we get people to come out at other times and start talking about this stuff six months or a year before the the vote because like in, Ch in Chelsea and Tunbridge people will say well we want to shut we want to shut down one of the buildings because it's you know people's property taxes are crazy well you can't talk about that on the night of the vote but you know we need to make people understand that some of these changes are a one three or five year process and I, I'm assuming there are other things that would come up that are not an overnight budget and vote night decision and discussion and, it, and I think the stakes are higher because everybody's property taxes, every dollar is, <clears throat> is starting to count more than it has in the past. And so people are getting more emotional, but they don't have the, the time necessarily to, in their heads to come out to do the discussions yeah. and somehow. Well, that would be like how best to communicate with you would be right. another thing. That's and not I like... Think, right. And so that, so that those are very true. valid conversations for mm -hmm. August. Okay. Well, what, uh, I'm, uh, yeah, what, what I, I mean, like, what, <coughs> what I mean is like, are we coming up with those kind of questions in addition to what's in the Articles of Agreement? I would say or, yes. Okay. I would say Good. yes. Let's do that. Well, if I'm, there's a way to uh, let us know whether it started in the Articles of Agreement or if it's just independent, if we sure. could figure that out and, and mark those a little bit differently so when we go to organize how we're going to go after it, that would be helpful. Yep. Um, but I think, yeah, I think it's just a second level. And I don't want to. I don't want to squash this. All these questions, I, but I think we'll be able to. They will fall pretty easily into some categories that, that will be workable. Yeah. Okay. Chris, I mean, uh, that kind of, oops, oh, excuse me. I, I think. Well, the other thing is, I mean, we had, or not we, but you know, Jamie had all these informational meetings ahead of time, or tried to. You know, what was the attendance to those? And the, and then. You know, there's a cadre of people that came out and said we didn't know what was going on and all that. And, and in my mind, you know, I mean, you we gave the opportunity or the opportunity was given. And um, yeah. So, again, let's um, <coughs> let's just start with the first question that came to mind, Emily. Well, I was just wondering, is that the first question? How do we improve communication or whatever? That like, is that the first question? Or well, we'll let Andrew start and say, is that what you want? Um, so just an example, I think, you threw out. Yeah. <laughs> 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 good as good spot as anywhere. Or, or do we want to start? Should we just gauge how question. people feel we're communicating? Or is the communication adequate? Okay. Or is it effective? I mean, yeah. Effective? I mean, I think there's lots of different ways we could do it. I think if you <laughs> surveyed by stakeholder and asked that same question, then you would know, depending on who the stakeholder is <coughs> and how they ask their relation to the school, you could at least get a gauge about yeah, people who aren't connected at all don't feel like they know anything, or parents feel really communicated with, or I don't know what it is, but I think yeah. then you would know how to channel your communication differently depending on the stakeholder. So, Emily, is, is communication effective? Great. Does that work? That's great. Now, I'm going to wait on the ideas, and the reason why is that we, will get, we won't get past question number five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we sure. just won't. So... Aaron, you're next. Sure. Um, the first thing on my list was, it, you know, reading through the history of the way this all went down, it seemed really tumultuous, and I assume they were like bad feelings, and I wonder if any of them persist, you know? Okay. Like if people have lingering, you know, bad feelings about votes and then re-votes and people dropping out and, you know, I don't know, it just makes me wonder, like, what kind of, you know... Ways to put that. Oh, there you got it. Thank you. I need to move. I, can't. I wonder I can't see if we could just have it like, are you happy that it happened? Right, because you know, <coughs> at this point, right. 
because that answers the question. Mm -hmm. If they yeah. Should I just put them both now. up there for now and like? Yeah. Because yeah, we're Absolutely. gonna wordsmith this way more. Right? <laughs> no, we're just sending it out. <laughs> <laughs> Are you happy now? Okay. okay. Happy now. Like, just period. Or question. Yeah. That is. Because they'll say no. It's going to be no one's happy. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Mary. Mary, you're up. Well, I'm thinking about, you know, these yeah, you know, many topics for one. questions. I'm going to jump into the strong connections with the community through public-private partnerships. So I don't know what that question would be. You know, is there evidence of? Has your child no. been involved with? Have you been involved with any community um, partnerships? Mm. It's on page six. I'm like, I don't know what it is. Yeah, I remember that section. Community, community singular or plural? What do you, what do you, what do you prefer? Good. Let's okay. think about that. That's With an important word. Yeah. That's a real important word. Thank you. Um, we wanted to say community or communities because what you did in your merger is you created a community. It's not two communities. And the, the whole mindset and the the thoughts behind right or wrong, the mergers were about creating a new community where everybody's kids are everybody's kids. I mean, there's also kids so. from other communities as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. I and think there's, there's an upcoming, I think, movement for Chelsea to make the high school, our district high school. People were talking about that at the budget vote, so mm -hmm. we may get a little closer. So, um, Great. anyway, it be really good for everybody. Yes. So was this, uh, Mary, can you yeah. tell from, from what's said there, is it, was this a, to be an improvement? So was this stronger it, connection? Yeah, it's one of the characteristics. So the new district will be characterized by. Okay, then that's fine. Okay, great. Leo. Uh, I don't have any right now. That's okay. Thinking. Nancy? I pass right now. Yeah. Uh, there was a statement about ongoing communication with graduates, and I just wonder about the status of that and okay. uh, where that is or isn't at. And maybe that is status. And it was also about gathering their feedback. So I think just generally a statement about like how that is or isn't happening. That's always at my, um, that's Can a big I? thing for me is we forget to ask the kids. We do. We have <laughs> we a number just of do. graduates that have come back before and spoken to the Nice high school, and I think I think it's a great idea. Yeah. You know that I know my daughter would love to come back and talk again, and like you know there are other interesting successful <coughs> people that the community ought to know that we're producing these kids, <laughs> and not just reading the bad stuff in the paper. <laughs> you know. I just think a clearly articulated feedback loop for all the kids. That well, so there, there actually is a program that we are, um, we wanted to do, uh, okay, aspirations gonna, of these out there. There are some off, answers, Jeff, I'm too. really sorry, sorry. but we're, this is going to take us a while here. I'm going to put up here, communicate our successes. Yep. And for students, so we don't lose this, I don't want to lose it, but I don't want to get stuck there. So, Sandy, do you have something? Yeah, one of the points that, that the committee made about attracting tuition students, Ooh, yeah. I, I want to see the data. Yeah. Are we improving? Are we staying the same? Are Where are these kids coming from? And are they successful in our school? Excellent. Jeff, I'm going to, um, do you have something to contribute? I mean, it would be fine, because we opened it up. It's not just about the Articles of Agreement. So if there's something that you would like to know, let's get it down here. So um, I think the question of on budgets of what is in our power to change and what is not is something that if we could clearly get that out on multiple occasions and maybe through multi multiple media, um, that because a lot of people they'll spend so much time well insurance has gone up this much why are we doing that well it's not our that's not something we can negotiate do. anymore uh, so <laughs> i think that a clear the the voters having a clear idea of what is within the power of the school board to control <coughs> the costs 
it would be helpful, uh, and I think this is a, a statewide phenomenon, not just here, um, and maybe even get people to organize if you don't like how things, to like a question of like, we need to organize, and if we don't like it, we need to communicate to Montpelier so that maybe take the heat off of the school boards, because there's a lot of time spent dealing with things that you can't do. I, we, I think that was a lot of what Jamie seemed and the, the a couple interactions I had with the, the training with custodians one day and some of the, the emails that went out was um, he was trying to be very much more clear about the things that were in, in control and not in control, yeah. you know. Of, of it's unbelievably complicated. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. the other thing that we're going to find here is that what I'm also hearing, and Jeff, you helped me with this, is that that's more not of a question for this, but... Of the school board. <laughs> Sorry, Andrew. Yeah. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> That's for you. Yeah. I mean, so there's things we're that we're trying to get them, answers but yeah. from we people for from, and then mm -hmm. information and, that we're trying to push to those. It all kind of interconnects mm -hmm. because the, the feelings about all the mergers are so entwined in what the costs Absolutely. are and what and people feeling out of control. And I, you know, like we were talking about, or if we are going to produce some sort of thing with updated data and stuff, that'd be something that we could put into that, not necessarily as like something that we're going out to get an answer from people for our, from. But. Yeah, because the, the, um, the tuition data, if that's positive, mm -hmm. that's something you want out there. Yeah. You definitely want I that. mean, you know, are we attracting right. enough? Yeah. And <laughs> exactly. And we're going. Yeah. Certainly when wasn't the when first bit. When we get bit, to the place of talking about <laughs> what we want to do it's like a little bit to going go forward, mm -hmm. That may end up being part of what you talk about is how do we how do we increase that even more? Yeah. Okay. Where are we here? Um, me. I think. Oh, um, sorry. I wondered what happened with the outdoor experiential learning program. Okay. I don't know if you want me to just write that. What is the status of the? <laughs> yeah, because I don't think it exists that way. No, it doesn't. Um, that made me think of the thing that I wanted to yeah. mention. Lang um, yeah. Language. World languages. Is also in here. Okay, does not exist. Yeah. yeah, I'll let you go out. That yeah. was something that I had highlighted. It said STEM and um, you know, curricular offering STEM and world language. Uh, just status of. You want to put? You can put all three of those in the all same question. Seven. Yeah, same thing. They seem like different issues, but or it doesn't matter. <laughs> well, my, well it, you're right. My question different about responses. the outdoor experience learning program was more about like why. What was the community's goal with that? Like so, it seemed to stand out in this. Right. <laughs> so when we initially were merging, it was going to be Royalton, Bethel, and Rochester. Uh -huh. And Rochester Stim. is right next to the you know state forest Stim. or national Stim. forest, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. national forest. And they had right outside their back door, literally. Right. Yeah. And so and they were closing their high school. And one of the thoughts was that we would utilize that space to. <coughs> hold this outdoor experiential learning program, okay. which would be like a separate thing that would go in that space. And a lot of people really like that idea. I see. And when it switched to being just Bethel and Royalton, then we kind of took that, or not we, but they took that and kind of made it. Stayed in. Took it out from Rochester and brought it to here, but then it never really, I don't know. It, it wound up like we certainly have done a lot with kind of eco and... Right, I assumed eco was what was kind of filling that role. But not yeah. everywhere, right? Like, no. I don't think it's pre-K to 12. Yeah, it, it's expanded into the middle school. Before, we did have the eco program in Bethel, um, but just elementary and not as expensive. We did have it in the middle school. Well, I mean, okay. Anyway, yeah, we're a little oh, I appreciate the background. Okay. So I have a question. For a question, I have a question. For a question like that, it seems like it could be Seven not questions. only well, yeah. not only like reflecting on or those. Th is there a desire for that? Right? Is it just getting feedback? Like, what's our status now? But is there a desire for that? In the well, and that, yeah. So that would be when we went back and talked about in smaller groups about that. how we're going to get that okay. information. Okay. What is the information okay. we're really looking for? Yeah. I mean, I think some of it's okay. going to be we need to gather this information yeah. that we can get ourselves or kind of provide an update on what it was. And then mm -hmm. there's the, okay. what do people think about it? Like, do we yeah. need to ask questions from the public? Yeah, I mean, it's That's almost okay. in my own mind starting to take on a three piece to it. You know, what, how did, how did we do in comparison to what we had hoped to do? 
what is happening right now and what might be good ideas to go forward. Yeah. But we'll see. Um, all right. I think that's what's Did you have something or did, did yours get, did you um, contribute something? No, well, the one thing that I looked at, I was looking at more thinking of going through this page by page. I highlighted and didn't write down questions. So, but I guess, did we, are we attracting more? It says in here that we hope to attract more people to the, to the district and the region. Um, is, so just general. Is, is that, yeah, general is that happening? Yeah, are we, are we attracting? I mean, we have like a housing families? shortage, you know, or whatever. So I don't know how many people can come in because there's nothing to come to. But um, you know, it, there's some. So I don't. I just. Is that what we want? Is it young families you're thinking about? Yeah, or, or any or any fam families? any family. You know, yeah. doesn't sure, matter it doesn't. Wh where they are in their education journey. Right. And with families yeah. the displacing law students and actual single family homes. Yeah. Yeah. Brings more money to the district. Yeah. Andrew, you got another one? I'm um, sure. One of the, I think it was in the um, characteristics thing, was that a students would have a close relationship with at least one teacher and yeah. feel like a valued member of the educational community. So, do you have that relationship and feel like you're. Significant adults? Yeah. And a valued member of the educational community. <laughs> Significant adults in the school. Um, there's more. So there's a close relationship with at least one teacher and a valued member of the educational community. Like, I don't know. If you look at the yeah, I know, saw it. It's yeah, like yeah. a sentence. Okay, six. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm reading. I think I highlighted. Yeah, that was one of the things I highlighted. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, so I, I guess I had a question and it was you know, that um, there was a proposed, it was projected that, that we would save money, you know, $137,000 and that the homestead tax rate would stabilize. And I wonder, if, you know, I'm sure everybody wonders if that happened. I don't know. Some people probably know. <laughs> Andrew knows. <laughs> I, can, um, I can show you a graph. <laughs> what was the homestead piece? Sorry, for my um, that the homestead tax rate would stabilize by, com you know, by having a bigger population. To yeah. I don't know if, they, I don't know if it piggybacks with that, but it also I think there's a they, maybe they're about separate efficiencies questions. too, and I wonder oh. about how we could demonstrate if we really are realizing efficiencies or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the Right. Well, I guess yeah. That I yeah. that How was one of the. That? I don't know. It's stated oh, in that's here. For later. Okay. <laughs> ah, sorry. Well, I'm trying to think of like. Okay. So, are we more? Have we realized efficiencies? Is that what? Yeah. It? yeah it's under great. You know, it's. it's, it's we're gonna have efficiencies. Greater, so greater yeah. efficiencies in operation. Yeah. Which is code for a smaller. Oh, man, it's been a long day. I can't spell. <laughs> well, I think <laughs> that's it It's okay. <laughs> I think that was, nearly killed that was, <laughs> yeah. There were specific <laughs> examples under that, like shared staff between schools right. and that things like that. So there could be questions that are really efficient. specific to what that efficiency yeah. promised to be. Yeah, because I had a question about the shared staff thing. I know it can go in there or not, but it was just... Is that... Well, I would is, go ahead and put it in there. We can, I mean, like, we can combine one or go in there. What do you got? Yeah. Then, yeah. Oh, sorry. Are I guess we're still staff. going around. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. How they many can, staff are shared between <laughs> buildings or something? Uh, does it actually work? How, it sounds yeah, good how on paper, paper but, yeah. like, <laughs> I can imagine it could be... Was it realized? Was it realized? Right. This is Bowen. What did you like? Yeah, the real Where's the chainsaw? Super efficient. This is what's going on. All right, you're going to be a question. She was real efficient. <laughs> what, what you may find when we go to do the second part of it is that you'll want to tweak the question because the yeah. question, as you go to figure out how to so. answer it, you realize yeah. that it's not exactly what you're doing. Yeah. And then we'll let people say, well, wait a minute. Um, that's really what I meant. Uh, Mary. Okay, so let me preface this in that I, I think um, this question would need to be considered like it's I'm thinking of the excited engaged teachers who are using their strengths and creative ways and are creating intentionally innovative instruction to engage in best practices I would feel very vulnerable as a teacher if I 
if that question was going to the public, maybe. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Are teachers good? <laughs> right? So, but I would like to know what if teachers feel right. like they've been empowered to be excited and engaged and use their strengths in a creative way. I think, I think that's it's valuable. It's good, though, but to I, have pressure that you can't continually try to say, well, we've done this since the 80s and that's how we should do it. And so I, being in the environment and seeing what happens, I think that there needs to be that pressure <coughs> because the people who do not and who would be afraid of that question are the people who are going to stand in the way of change. change. And, but more importantly, just meeting the legal requirements that are coming down with all of the, you know, whether it's Act 77 or whatever, mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes you got to just do what is happening. And yeah, but I, I, I respect teachers and many teachers might look at that and feel very vulnerable if that was a question that went out to the public and felt like but I do agree. It was something I highlighted yeah. about my, yeah. about I teachers' perception, it. and that's very important. Do yeah. you feel yeah. energetic and engaged mm -hmm. <laughs> in all the things? Right. right. Connected right. To uh, so yeah, is that what you? What? Sorry, I was trying to. Um, I, well, I'm there. interested in. Um, a question for teachers if they feel where, excited. Where is that, Mary? It's page, like the third bullet down page on page six. six. Oh, sorry. Excited, engaged teachers who are using their strengths in creative ways and are creating intentionally innovative instruction and engaging best practices. I think it's a great question to right ask here. teachers if they're feeling that way and oh, what okay. barriers might exist mm -hmm. if they aren't feeling that way. Well, or how are, how are they being supported in a way that leads them there. Well, right, because we mm -hmm. can have all the pie-in-the-sky the stuff, but if we keep having it, one more thing, you know, it's yeah. been a common theme lately, I think, in mm -hmm. some areas. If everything's one more thing, then, you know, yeah, do they and feel? I, and I think, I'm not saying there isn't a place for the public and community <coughs> and families to give input, but I would just want to be really mindful about that. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's very important. I agree, because then you won't be able to attract teachers. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Just well, later. no, it's it's absolutely <laughs> true. If if you're burning everybody out, don't thoughts. think everybody else won't know it or why you have openings all the time. Absolutely. Well, I kind so, of feel like have teachers read this? this? Have teachers even read this? Do they no. know that this Probably is not the recently. identity I, of I what shared, it means? I shared it with some recently, and it was news to new teachers. So yeah. They didn't yeah. know about this. So I'm going to break my own rule there. Since that was on several people's list, does that question cover enough of what you were thinking about? those of you that have that on their, on their list, too. I kind of have a piggybacking question, because you're talking about the kind of like challenges that might make it difficult to get there. How are we dealing with the changing um, disciplinary needs and challenges that teachers are facing? Because that, I think, is, the, is one of the factors that interferes with mm -hmm some of those Happy things that we would like to have teachers doing. Yeah, and if we'd asked this question That's more two years ago during COVID, like... Yeah. It would be very different. Yes. Yeah. I mean, They're great. It, I, I haven't seen them for years. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? How are Pop we responding to, responding to changing, changing disciplinary needs? needs? Responses yeah. to changing behavioral needs? Is that it? Oh. Yeah, because, I mean, because it, it's, it's one of the questions that is presented every single day. In, in the high school, yeah. and I would imagine in other levels as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I think or with that one, we're probably going to have to lost. break it into multiple questions. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's also like, what is innovative instruction? That that would be interesting to me. Like, what what is that? Yeah. yeah. Everybody. And how does one plan that? <laughs> Maybe it's just. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Pass that one right up. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, I do. Um. Maybe like how involved the parents are in the community through the school and stuff. Nice. Mm -hmm. In increased, are there increased, is there increased um, participation on the part of parents? And how do we increase it yeah, amongst people who yeah. do you participate? Would you Probably like to participate? That's always the question. Though. We always ask that question. Sort of like, <laughs> the mindset for a lot of people though is, that's your job to take care of my kid during the day and I don't want to be. Mm. I don't want to take my time to do that. That's your job. Well, it, there's a, I, there isn't as a strong parent-school partnership. Well, and I think there's something to that. And, and part of that is public school versus private school. I mean, private schools, 
that's often part of the agreement is if your child is coming to this private school, oh, by the way, mom and dad, here are the six things that you're going to do. You're a, you have a and role in fundraising or whatever. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, right. There's right. a lot of roles. And with, with public school, part of it, and, and, and I know it's frustrating, certainly, um, from the education uh, <coughs> community that parents are not more involved, but I think that it's fair to say in many of the communities that we serve that we are where kids need to be so that they can Absolutely. go to work and provide. Yep. And so that's when it get, that's how it gets dicey. It so gets complicated in terms of how to how to access them because they're the part they're partners. So that's a this is, but this is kind of a greater community wide problem. It, you know, it, as we look at our high school students, the same kids are doing everything. You know, I come down the hallway to ask them yeah. about something, and everybody just kind of covers their face if, if it's during a period where there's a lot of things going on because they're like, I can't do another thing. Yeah. But as we increase and we start looking at, you know, just like who's on these committees and how many other committees or boards are all of you on? And I know in Chelsea, there's probably 40 of us that do everything, and there's a thousand people in the town. And I think it's like, how do we get community engagement as a whole, including like what we're teaching the kids? Because I well, hang on to that until we go <coughs> down to you, because that's different than participation. Mm -hmm. parents. So but I think it's connected too, because they, like there, everybody is so stretched and feels like they don't have the time, enough time, and it's it's like a greater problem than just having the parents involved. But we see it all right. around. Well, this, this was Leah's question, was mm -hmm. about parents. Mm -hmm. So we'll get around to you and then we can expand <laughs> it. And if in the end we pull it together, that's great. But it may be that there's different stakeholders that are, are different approaches to how we get that information about parents mm -hmm. versus the community at large. Mm -hmm. So, Nancy. Yes. Okay. Capstone projects was mentioned. Oh, status of capstone projects. Uh, explain that to me. Yeah. Build a gun. So, <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 I think project. Project. <laughs> while it's not outlined in here, it is still also connected to the, the WRV SU, I think, um, strategic, 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 strategic plan, plan mentions something. it as well. About like end of elementary, there's a capstone project, and the middle school is capstone mm -hmm. project. It's not just limited to like you yeah. graduate with a yeah. and do a capstone okay. project. So. I think that's coming okay. next year. <coughs> we actually are meeting with the juniors tomorrow, mm -hmm. and so in the high school, it's okay. underway. They'll be picking in the next couple yeah. weeks. They'll be picking their stuff out for next year. I think there's just pockets of places things are happening, but yeah. it's. Well, and some will take years to put it in place. It's not a choice of choices okay. if they only do it. Um, you know, um, under elementary school, we believe it is important for our youngest learners to be educated in elementary schools located in their home communities. And I've heard scuttlebutt about things changing within the schools and where I think it's really important for little kids to feel comfortable going to school in their own hometown where mom and dad are closer um, until they get their sea legs in school and then you know go on to another building or another bus or whatever uh, and I just think it's important for little kids to stay in their own community so that's something that we ought to put out there if that's in Absolutely. the works. All right, Jeff. Pass. Your community question. Yeah, community question. How do we? <laughs> how do we? I mean, I know, like, how do we start to shift the culture back to having more people involved in community processes? So, and so maybe in the entrance of this. The charge of this group, it would be, has the merger affected community? Well, I, I think it'd be useful sense? to find out what barriers people have yeah. to involvement. Yeah, because I mean, going to, to school board meetings, mm -hmm. coming to school functions, taking part <coughs> in various boards, and you know, yeah, working with the PTA. I, I don't, I, I forget what it's called. It, PTO. It's PTO. 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 Okay. PTA is and, national. Yeah, and just there, there's multiple things, and we, and we, I mean, I know when I see parents doing stuff, 
at sports, it's always the same parents. <laughs> and, you know, the, there's, the trend is, is that there's a small group of people spread out amongst these things, and it would be nice to get more people. Yeah. Well, I can tell you that part of the, well, I would assume that part of the strategy of capstone projects at all those different levels is about community involvement and getting local community mentors to mm -hmm. work with the kids. It's a huge, uh, you know, effective strategy. That's cool. So that's exciting. Um, Emily, back to you. Um, status of these advisory councils. Aha. Yeah. That's an easy one. Are there? Are there? Well, I think it's, it's under plunk. it's under elementary, but is it does it include each middle school and high school? Can, I guess that's, that's what I want. We can provide a history of what happened. happened right? Yeah, that's great. Right. That would be good. Just find yeah. that out. Okay. And it's related to the previous question. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> yeah. okay. Sure. And if somebody says the word related, again, we're going to start finding people, okay? Because they are all related. Of course. <laughs> Chris, you're next. Um. Well, I guess under um, recommendations it, at the bottom it says um, we'll exempt these districts from further mandated redistricting by the the state. Well, well, will this agreement be null and void if if down the road the governor of the state mandates something different or more merging of of schools or consolidating districts? That's a great question. Because I, I, I think in our, in, it was something that's been brought up by Jamie and other people that I, I think s some of this is, it's what we have, but is the state going to mandate something else down the road? So how does this set us up for future yeah. consolidation? Yeah, if, if, the, if the need be, yeah, absolutely. And after the mandate came down to consolidate, there were so many school districts after a while said, now we don't want to do this and let's have a revote and they got revoted out or whatever. Yeah. And it seemed like they didn't adhere to what was expected. We were we were part of it twice. I mean we we got to came together. I mean there was some animosity in pockets, but I mean I I think we've done something that's really well. I mean was the other model gonna succeed? No, absolutely not. Will this model succeed? My guess yeah. is the short answer to that question is if the legislature decides to do it differently, then the law will be different and we'll have to respond. We'll spend yeah. more money. So but then I would hope that there would be advocates, because I certainly was part of a merger that I think <coughs> was, was real positive um, and has a lot more things that could be done um, that people will have an opportunity to say no, first in, but, but it was the legislature that did this to begin with. So. Um. Law. Um, Okay, where are we here? So I've got a series of questions on transportation. Okay. Um, the general, you know, like, is the current busing system working? Do you use the bus? If yes, is it timely or are the roads too long? If you don't use it, why not? Okay, a great working question to get a lot of people's perspective on, right. like mine. And you <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Is it well, you gotta, no, I mean, I got a kid so that is it working? And that's yeah. a lot use it. I mean, I don't know that we need to about like I would just have transportation, transportation. as okay. a general yeah. category. Yeah. Status yeah. update of transportation system or something. Yeah, yeah it's not so much evaluation, status update. Analysis? Evaluation of it. Yeah. Like, how how do people think we're doing with it? Mm. And, and can we do it? Depends on the day. How are they using it? Well, today. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but uh, do we, I guess some of us have previous knowledge of how it was. I mean, do we go back to not contracting, you know, have a contracting service? Do we, I mean, yeah, do we Do we go yeah. back to owning our buses? I, I don't know. I'm just, you know, like we've, I've seen it both ways in my tenure here. And, and you know, I don't know what worked better or was it what was more fiscally responsible or not. You know, I don't know. Well, I, I think it'd be useful to answer how many people are using it? How do they think it's serving them? And then for the people who aren't, like, why not? Is it the length of the routes? Is it having high school kids and elementary kids all on the same bus? You know, there's a lot of behavioral issues. I think there's lots of reasons why people might not. I only got a one-way bus right now, so <laughs> just in the morning, you know. So, I mean, that's it's okay, yeah, but I mean. That's, and that's a big, yeah. a big, yeah. big issue for parents. Yeah. Um, where are we here? Uh, um, so I had a I, 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 I had a question, and it was about 
The goals of this effort will be to increase student opportunity <coughs> and achieve equity across the entire region. So really the equity is something I wonder, do people feel like there is equity, like especially with two separate elementary schools and people having to travel further or less or, you know, which, you know, comes into that. So. Have we achieved equity? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you ever? That's a good question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a question. Progress with equity. Mm -hmm. Andrew and, and Andre, are there things going on at the state level around equity now that, in terms of requirements and reports and things? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When we meet, when we say, it, we have to equity on paper versus yeah. on paper, and I, we have to write now this year a continuous improvement plan, and it is yeah. based on equity. Yes. Yeah, and I, and I mean, part of that, I assume, had to do with the different dropout rates, the different scores, you know, certain towns yeah. seem to be achieving better in standardized testing. Like, so, like, I assume that equity has to do with that also. And, like, that's sort of wrapped up in that question for me is, yeah. like, have those things even, evened out, like... You know, and I, I, I mean, I assume those, the, some of my questions are things that could just be answered. And I mm -hmm. wonder if they're more of things that I assume other people would be wondering and we would be informing them about, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. as opposed to asking them about. No, I think that there's a lot in that. And part of it is, is when we make some of the mergers have, have been made, and I'm not sure about yours, but um, was, you know, like you were saying, differences in achievement levels from one school to another. And then, you know, did, did that... If that ha was true here, has has it there been a positive? Um, right. Has that been positive? I think part of it too is, um, at least in my personal experience, has been how do you keep and attract high quality teachers in in small rural communities? And if we're not able to, uh, the, the uh, finances are not there to pay them. Mm -hmm. So my guess is that that was part of what this plan was too was to create some efficiencies and to get, um, have, create more, um, create, the, get more money that you can put into your staff and into opportunities for kids, so, mm -hmm. so good question. Mary. So I'm looking, Emily, on page six. I'm just going to read from there. It's that first piece. Is there strong personalized learning at all yeah. levels and for all students with diverse, flexible pathways and a broad array of offerings? both in the community and within the school. <coughs> See, and some of that I look at and say, well, that's, um, that's the law now. There should not be all there. Are there? Well, Personal learning plans? Well, that's gone out in the last couple of years. Oh. School kids are... Um, yeah, they're all kind of stuff they're doing. <coughs> but that also might be related. Some kids can't. But that curricular changes in there. Yeah, I mean. Leah? Yeah. Yeah. I can do that. Nancy? I think all of the questions I've had are up there. Okay, great. Is it Andrew or Andrew? Andrew. Okay. At the bottom of six, it says that the creator of the larger districts will allow for the small schools to realize broader array of programming. I just wonder about that. If like we really can demonstrate that we are offering a broader array of programming, mm -hmm. which is, I know. Yeah, I mean, I think getting a list of our curriculum and comparing the number of classes and <coughs> APs and various things to what we had before. Is that captured in 23? Because it has that broad array of offerings, which I mean. Where's the curricular question? Is it? <coughs> but getting the kids in the class is that's is that. I think because I think twenty three is more problem? about personalized learning. Yep. Yep. Where was where were you looking at, Andrew? Six. Yeah. Maybe it's just gonna find it. I guess I, it's under elementary school, so it oh. made me think specific to the elementary school, and it's connected to that world language question. But um, fourth line up. Thank you. Didn't we have somebody coming in teaching Spanish or something? It's really hard we did. To keep them. Yeah. I'm happy to explain why that's a problem. Well, I think, <laughs> Andrew, I don't have to explain <laughs> it. That Somehow. could be part of the report because some of the things, oh, that's me, sorry. Um, oh, my son, let me go away. Uh, <laughs> wants something. Thanks, uh, Mom. Mom, you're on video now, so. <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> I didn't name him anyway. 
Okay. Um, I was, oh, what were we talking about? Broad array. It's Broad like, array. Page oh, six. the hope is that, <laughs> that some of you know some of the things that have not perhaps been able uh, to be fulfilled is just based on availability of staff. Of, yeah. <clears throat> You know, geographically where you are, the foreign language is a common problem. There's also, like shortage. hours in the day, yeah. you yeah. cannot hours. do it all. Yeah, you no. can. True. And, uh, you cannot do it well, all. Well, piggybacking on that is how are the efforts to improve the lower skill levels of some of our students taking up the time that could be used for some of those things? Because I mean, there's a lot of stuff that we have to we have to do because we're yeah. dealing with reading deficiencies and math deficiencies and there so I mean we run into kids in the high school who during we had an explorations period and they're taking um, whatever the math um, <clears throat> extra math classes to try to bring them up to skill level so there's a poverty slash I think also COVID bump right yeah there's a COVID but didn't help poverty didn't help behavior and I almost wonder if we should ask yeah. a question about COVID but mm. And like how that has affected the progress or something. I don't know. Mm. It's probably good to acknowledge okay, it because some of these things are out of our control. Yeah. I don't know where we are. Sandy. Sandy, you're. Oh. Man. <coughs> oh. Here, I have to pass on this one. Well. Okay. Uh, I just think the kids aren't. Some of the kids. This is my observation. You have a lot of study halls. And they never have anything to do. So maybe offering, I don't know, that you have to make them do, do one thing out of their comfort zone. You know? Well, I'm going to, yeah. Well, something that like that, good. just like light a fire. Sometimes it's hard to get them to do it in their comfort zone. I know, I know. I, well, well, or have them not go to the bathroom 12 times. It's yeah. um, <laughs> the problem with the middle school as well. <laughs> I was going to say, you're speaking Emily's language like, here. You really have to pee every 45 minutes? Yeah. That's weird. That's why that urinal exploded <laughs> today. With For real. phone. <laughs> Think of the germs. Yeah. Well, they don't technically have their phones here. Uh -huh. Well, sometimes, too, it's pure scheduling issues in small schools True. and small staff. True. It I has, agree. you know, it's, it's purely, that's not to say it can't be better, but... Um, Sometimes it's just trying to get. I mean, I guess somebody brilliant. It would be more like, are graduation requirements mm -hmm. adequate, or do yeah. we need to push Ooh, them okay. further? Yeah. yeah. And maybe right. that's the capstone will help to engage. Maybe I think getting them to focus on something and dig deeper, so they don't lie. Rigorous. Well, that's that what you said. Then they get it. <coughs> I said adequate. But. Adequate. Yeah, I like that. Well, yeah. I mean, I think we'll that there's yeah. behavioral. Um, barriers to increasing graduation rigor. We have to increase their transferable skills I mean, rigor before they're going to be able to and those kids who are not engaging, mm -hmm. they're not engaging out of habit a lot of times. It's not academic ability. Mm -hmm. sure. And they know how to manipulate the system so, as, so to avoid doing. And so like we actually see a lot of kids that you're having to bend things because they just are like <coughs> I'm not doing it. Um, I no. guess <coughs> another way of putting it would be are we producing graduates that are prepared prepared, prepared or successful prepared. or whatever. Yeah. Mm. Life. Yeah. Basically some of them. Certainly. Well it's interesting and uh, this is another rabbit hole which we're not going to go on tonight. Is that there are schools in Vermont that have taken their transferable skills and those in fact are their graduation requirements. And it's a very interesting thing to think about in terms of the world today. I think we okay. tried that as, <laughs> I think that was the thing we did as Whitcomb. Didn't we do that at the very end of that? Anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, were you um, up next? Well, um, the attraction of additional tuition students. Yeah. This is kind of where I come into play a lot of times. So I'll ask the question so I can later toot my own horn, I guess. Um, so how have we and what have we changed? Okay, you get a chance to answer that later. But no. Well, I'm not going to, I'm not answering, I'm giving you the question. Oh, okay. Yeah. How, how have we and what have we changed to attract tuition students? Okay, so we have a tuition student question. Do you want me to add it to that? Add it to yeah, that. Yeah, let's, um, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> da, da, da. 
Yeah, well, yeah. well that was Five. one of the. What were your so? It's what is the data in regards? Does that sum we, it up? Do you think? Or well, I mean, there, there are programs that we're adding and have added that might not be in data sets. Okay. It okay. Would be, you'd have yeah. to actually ask people. But those are the so, questions. So that's yeah. the how and where we. So yeah. In. So I guess it added so to that. That's your, which is fine. What are what are the programs or reasons that yeah. people are tuitioning in? Well, I was just saying, well, what are we doing? Because, I mean, really, okay. we can't tell you why kids are coming, but we can tell you what we're doing and we think oh, is oh, attractive. Well, I do think it would be good to ask why kids are coming. Have yeah, yeah, and so we should ask. Go it. somewhere else. Have students left to go somewhere else or dropped out? I've found that more kids in the high school level are actually, you know, we've had kids leave Thetford to come here. And, well, uh, but we I mean, should still ask this question to have that data. Right. Yeah, I think yeah. It. Right. Okay. Sorry, ask the question again. Sorry, my brain is like. So thank you for is, doing you know, this. Is, happy to. How many students have left? <laughs> Feels concrete. <laughs> <laughs> we can do this. <laughs> what is the data in regards to tracking? And then this is how are we going to get that information? Who are we going to ask? Okay. Well, so, so the data. I mean, I think that there's different questions. There are kind of different. Yeah. yeah. Do we put them nearby? Or yeah, combine sure. them? Put it. With <laughs> put it. Put it with it. So what are we doing? Is that the question or no? Yeah. What are, what we, are we doing? What are we doing differently? Or yeah. That if, and why are they coming? And then we uh, the the next question would be asking students why they decide the tuition students why they decided to come here. That's definitely the next one. I mean, is side. it uh, like are we yeah, yeah. considering yeah. surveying yeah. other communities to say why would did you not come here? Yeah. yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Do or why are you not coming here or whatever. So, yeah. <laughs> why we have kids who are tuitioning or not, you know, It would be interesting. Out. Okay. It's yeah, interesting there's a lot there. To th think about um, asking families that, choose, you know, that are choosing other, not choosing to go wildcat, right, within our whole SU. Okay, I'm watching the time. Are we getting close to <coughs> the bottom of people's list? We need, to, we need to finish this piece up so we can get to the other part. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, school councils? Is that the same thing as an advisory board? That was Article 12. It says school councils. Right. I don't uh, know what that is. They're related, but different. different I don't okay. They are. Different. Oh, okay. So, okay. sorry, I have a lot of status updates. That's okay. No, that's I good. That's kind of <coughs> yeah. Does it matter how many kids are choosing in to attend either campus, like school choice, yeah, between campuses, elementary campuses? Because that is something we could oh, that's a do good get part. data on. Mm -hmm. Sorry, how many concrete. are How many royalty families are coming to the Bethel campus and vice versa? Are using in district choice. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. years ago, it was 13 miles from my house to get down to school. Now, a lot of my neighbors who have small kids come here mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. because it's that's more convenient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. Chris. Um, I know it speaks in here, and I was just trying to hold this in the whole time, but it, it speaks of dropout rate. So I wonder about that. But I also wonder about um, lumping, like, truancy and dropout rates mm -hmm. in here and finding out um, how, why is this happening, or is this families that, um, y you know, are they... Are they impoverished? Are they uh, having difficulties? Um, you know, how, how, how could we serve them to, to prevent some of this? And I think our dropout rates, I, I think, are, are pretty good. You well, know, I would I think, say, or, you know, to but, start with, have our dropout rates and truancy rates right. improved. If right. That's the right I think well, those are two separate numbers. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah like, right. Huh. Well, it, yeah. in well, some ways it could be indicative of, you know, families nationwide. that are moving yeah, in, you know, to, to the district or not. But really. Sometimes it does, so. <clears throat> People were remote for a while. What are we saying? Truancy or attendance? What? What? Or like? What are you saying? Uh, I would say yeah. How? How have the, how what are the rates? You know. Change? Yeah. Let's just do what our dropout rates. What our truancy rates? Fair enough. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, so I would like some questions <coughs> on voter participation. So, did you attend the annual meeting? If not, why not? Would you attend on a different day, different day of the week, different time? Yep. All that stuff. Sorry, you said voter. Is it kind of general? Voter category? participation. Okay. 
And that, yeah, so what you, so hang on to all, don't get rid of it, all of that, any of that that you have written, because when you get to here, it may be a forum, it may be a survey, but you, if it's a survey, you just popped out four questions that belong to the survey. Yep. So some of that work is done, it's just not going here right now. Um, um, the status updated on declining student population, which is, I assume, what led to this. Is it? It's, pro it's projected in here yeah, that yeah, it would stop, but did it? Or? That's an easy one. Yep. That's yeah. an easy one, yeah. I think that's related to the families moving in or not. Mm -hmm. But that's we did get that birth it. rate report. Yep, we did. At a board meeting that projected yeah, the right? projections we have. Yeah. How bad is that? Does that include it's COVID and people oh, moving like, in? Like storm five years ago? It's oh, like stabilized. Uh, stabilized. Oh. Your neighborhood's pretty hot. That's right. <laughs> like, yeah. It'll fix up anything right now. That's, That's right. right. It's crazy. It's increased because like, I know the high school oh, like we're Jeff's in. Jeff's house across from there. Okay, Mary. For three um, do students have <laughs> access like, to like, state-of-the-art technology? Oh, I wonder that, too. Then you have outlier classes that have like, yeah. Look at this fancy board we're typing. Yeah, on. no, it's you. <laughs> oh my gosh, Leah, can you just share your Promethean board comment the other day? What one? That you were so happy you went up to Mr. Oh, Blue. the um, new board things I think are really cool because the um, smart boards before, I know they've been in the school for a really long time, and that the writing feature on a lot of them didn't work. So it's nice for the teachers and the students to have better boards like this so they can learn more effectively. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's okay. good to have multiple perspectives. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Leah, you got a question? Yeah. Okay. You out? Exactly. Andrew? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're good? Okay. okay. Candy. I'm good too. <clears throat> for right now. All right. Good. Well, we can always add to that. Jeff? Good. You're good. Thank you. Emily? Um. We haven't, we haven't talked at all about, like, have we asked anything about, like, after-school activities, including athletics and just general extracurriculars? Yeah. I feel like yeah. people care about athletics, like, in yeah. a crazy way. I mean, I did, I did know there was some silly bullet in there about, we will effectively use all of our fields and resources, and I don't think it's, I mean, it doesn't matter what I think, but... Well, I w that was one thing I was curious about was, I remember at the very beginning we were going to have some varsity games here and in both towns, and whether they're still doing that or not. I haven't, yeah, that hasn't, I see them practicing, sometimes joining. I mean, we're certainly practice. using all the facilities, but it's like middle school here, it's high school there. Like that, yeah. yeah. It makes a lot of sense, because that's where it the campuses it, are. Yeah, the, the, um, tra the transfer between... It, it, it is difficult for the high schoolers to get over here because you know. Right. No, but I we were just doing like one game, you know, the Bethel game. Mm -hmm. like, uh, okay. we, I think we did that before COVID, and I don't think we mm -hmm. have since. And fields are flooded, and yeah. yeah. Right. But you know, it, it, it seems like it'd be a good yeah thing well, to do. Could we celebrate rehabbing our softball and baseball field? Mm -hmm. You know, like it could be something we try to celebrate. Yeah. You know, is that enough? Just status update. I think that's yeah. I think that's good. It'll lead us down whichever path we want to go. Chris, do you have uh, more? Uh, I guess I'll go to my wheelhouse facilities. Okay. There um, you go. So are, are we? We've just put significant um, investment in them, um, and we could use a lot more, <laughs> you know. But are we effectively using them? We're we're going to add entrances in the Performing Arts Center next year. Um, how do people view our facilities? Maybe. Um, mm -hmm. You know, or just are we? Um, well, and that's connected to attracting students. That's yeah. connected to attracting families. It's one of those. I mean, it's like your cover letter. You know, as far as the STEM in the middle school, like we're getting the maker space. We're doing, you know, like yeah. the signs and the signs over the doors, and some of that stuff is um, fantastic. But um, as far as the facility as a whole, um, no, yeah. What else do they wish we had that we don't? Yeah. That right. Yeah. I mean. High in the sky, yeah, that's what I mean. You can just have a list. But I know we're not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Include those Andrew? questions? Fixing or? little things no, no. that would come make a million dollar view. Um, <coughs> so, like, parental is, involvement is the structure that we currently have the correct structure as far as, like, grades? Grade their children's school? Not, phys not physical structure, but, right. well, kind of. But. 
Well, yeah. The grade level structure? Grade level structure. Well, yeah, I mean, could could it mean that sixth grade goes back to elementary? I mean, I don't, we don't really have to put it, but you know what I mean? They like, don't want it to we go go have, back. No, no, I understand <laughs> that. I don't, I don't want to throw they that monkey wrench in there. <laughs> yeah, but. Um, the best for kids. You yeah. know, but yeah, I mean, can we, can we change it to any large degree? I don't know. I think it would involve votes and things like that. What? It would involve votes and things like that. Well, right, right, right. Anything's possible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a, well, there was actually specific numbers, which I hadn't realized. You need like 75 for percent. Something about an elementary. If, if the thing. elementary schools, yeah. schools would to merge, merge, right. To close, oh, okay. To so close, that, yeah. But that, if we were to merge elementary, is that Well, would I, I guess that's right. where I go if the state mandates some other reorganization yeah. that would that supersede all that nonsense. and if we had to sure. no. consolidate again. It, I mean, these are what our district currently, the rules of our district currently are. So. Right, but would the, whatever the state says, would that supersede, would supersede these? That. No. Mm -hmm. yeah. really? well, I mean, it depends. Yeah. Like, if they, if they, they made another them, act, I guess, or whatever. Uh, right, but would, they would have to specifically say, like, this is, like, I don't know. They would right. have to specifically say how that, the... Yeah, things could be closed, and that, that would overrule any. Yeah. You know, <laughs> bad. I just wonder more about teacher perception. I know it's not really connected to this, but just about their perception <coughs> about satisfaction with the leadership structures, satisfaction with um, like their Support. contract compared to neighboring towns. I, I, it's also connected to the attraction of new teachers. Um, so, like. Whether you've worked here long time or short time, what your perceptions are. Well, I think some of that will come up. You'll have a chance to look, to look at all of these um, different ideas around the, how we're going to get this information or what is it. You'll all get to look at work on all of it. We're just going to split them in half tonight, and then so that would. You would have an opportunity to make sure that that's good. Um, where are we? Yeah. Yeah. Or Aaron. Yeah. Oh, Aaron. Um, maybe it's weird, but I um, I wonder how people think people outside of our community view our schools. Like, if I ask somebody, like, how do you think people from surrounding communities mm -hmm. think about our school? Like, what's your opinion of what you think their opinion is? I feel like that would be, I don't know, like you would learn something different than just what that person's opinion is. I don't know, maybe that's crazy, but. <laughs> so you have a lot of metacognition going on. Yeah, I don't know why, yeah, I don't know why it seems useful to me. Yeah. Maybe it isn't, though. Do you have a lot of private schools in the, in the immediate area? Just Sharon. Okay. Well, it's, right, it's, Sharon. In, it's interesting, though, because we have Randolph, and then, you know, you have, like, Granville, Hancock, like Rochester, Stockbridge, you know, like there's nothing. It's just crickets out there. You know, we're almost an <laughs> island unto ourselves. And then you go to Chelsea and 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 uh, Tunbridge, and and then you're you're going over to uh, um, Oxbow and Thetford, and you know, like all all that. So I mean, we're we we really have accomplished something pretty good here to, well, to be an island unto ourselves. This, how the school is viewed outside the SU is also connected, I actually never said that, um, to the attracting students mm -hmm. and attracting families. I guess mm -hmm. and we often uh, yeah. Communities often find that what's actually happening in their schools and what, what people, they're carrying baggage from 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so that, there's a lot in that one. Or they think we're in Hartford because of labor rejection. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I also think that there's like the school, the kids who can choose us from sending like school. But there's also the kids that have that choice, uh, the uh, superintendent's association choice, whatever that is, the white, I don't know what the group is. <coughs> you can have so many in, so many out. Yeah. And I wonder about their Winooski. perception. Winooski Valley, that's what yeah, it is. Right. Um, well, that's that's just an inner organization that's connected to the statewide system. It's the same. I just think that the perception of those students may be worth yep. looking at versus the perception of the kids who are choosing that because they don't have the high school. Yeah. Why am I? I actually live in Randolph. Why am I coming here? Yeah. Well, I mean, also why there are a few students that go elsewhere. So why? And if they leave yeah. and go elsewhere, why? And if they're homeschooled, why? Well, the homeschooled is not. 
Uh, we have not captured anything about mm -hmm. that. Well, that. Why, why don't you put Winooski school choice yeah, follow up or something? <laughs> and then, yeah, homeschool. And homeschool. And did a lot of our students leave during COVID and never came back? Or I, I don't know. For the elementary. Um, yeah, put the Winooski in because it is a different thing from okay, the school choice. Oh, true. I think that is the Emily, same was thing. that yours? Uh, no. Kind of lost where we were. I don't know where yeah, I am. Uh, uh, everybody we're losing our focus. Yeah. We're getting Oops. tired. That's okay. Do we have a question on family teacher communication? And should we? Or is that embedded in? Thought there was something about oh was communication. Uh, about. VTVLC, like, sorry, that was my question, was, like, questions about <laughs> online learning, and like, I'm like, I, maybe that's oh. part of the broad array. VTVLC counts as us. It's not. Well, online is <laughs> <what? laughs> Yeah. Okay. No. We can ask them why. I guess that has to do with the broad offerings or whatever, I but I, I have a question about that. But. Well, yeah, and there's some laws around that, too. So yeah. I, I guess it's already <laughs> stuff embedded. Sorry, I interrupted someone. Um. So you were saying communication. I was, yeah, family, you know, family, family teacher, 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 family school communication. Do we have a question? Do we have a question? I feel like that was the only one. Okay. Before you guys go. Right. Effective um, communication. Yeah. yeah, six minutes. There was a, in, in the increased transparency and accountability, there's the identification of a smaller number of boards being more being uh, or achieving more accountability so I it's really a question about are the boards as a result of the merger is our board more effective and being accountable if I'm reading that correctly I think that that was for the supervisory union board that that was specifically oh, talking about. okay because it would be six boards instead of ten boards okay are we is it worth keeping a question like that in there? Yeah. Is there anything well, I do that, think, that would be wanted? I do think, yeah, I mean, having is the SU board more effective, accountable, is worthwhile. And then we could have, like, is our school board composition correct? You know, like three from each town. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Can I get something to add? Um, yeah, then, I, then I'm going to stop. Yeah, are we heard, <laughs> since we're the biggest school, pay the biggest amount, are you heard? Or are you outvoted every single time or most often by the smaller schools? It's just a question that's been <laughs> going on forever. Sure. And it's still not solved. I right. can say that that hasn't been happening recently. Okay. Like, I feel like we have a very good relationship at the SU level. There hasn't been any, the thing is, there hasn't been any issues that are, you know, us versus them. Okay. We've all been, we're that's all great. working in the same Because it used to be. So, okay. okay. All right. I am in my mind at 7.30, so that's crazy. So we need to stop this conversation. Okay. We can pick it up and finish it. Um, I'm going to suggest that people go back through and make sure that everything is represented. And then we'll work on, and as you're doing that, um, to think about how we might gather this information. And we'll finish that part next um, time. But the question is, when is next time? I don't know if people, we were, had agreed to meet every other week, <clears throat> and, um, and then it got canceled last week. So are we meeting next week because uh, everybody already has it in their calendars? I asked this question oh, of Jamie, and he said we would have two meetings in a row. Because that's when he sent out the thing right. that said it was changed. That was my <laughs> statement was, well, we, we kind of set it up as not to yeah, align no, with the calendar, time. but we had a specific reason why we waited the couple weeks, and then we were three weeks, and then we met and he right. said that was correct so i i thought that i mean i'm totally every, fine everybody with me can next week. chime it's in just, with what they want and but. you've done <laughs> most of the work for next week anyway i'm just asking you to oh, take a I week and but either way back on schedule and that gets us on schedule on schedule yeah does that work for folks because I, I think it was planned around like vacations and other stuff or whatever too so yeah and I think that the desired goals and that were on the agenda and the stakeholder groups, part of that is coming out of this work that we'll finish next time. So I would anticipate that the, those two things would reappear. Um, so that would be Thursday, May 16th at the same time. Yes. Did anybody, does, I, I didn't hear anybody say no. But. <laughs> so. And, you know, we. I certainly had a huge part in our being 10 minutes late um, 
which I will be a better uh, manager of my own time. But the extra 10 minutes right now would have, would have made the difference to get this part done. So you guys were great about being on time. I hope that I did not um, just teach you not to be. <laughs> All right. Other things that questions or concerns or we okay with what happened today? It's a lot, but it is, as soon as we get to a place where we can begin to organize it, it'll feel more doable. Right now, it just feels like a, but that's what it is, so we'll, we'll get it down into workable pieces. But if you didn't get a chance to look at this stuff and, you know, go back, we'll, I will have, um, we'll share this document. Um, I will not put it out as, a, as editors, but if you want to create your own um, tables off of that to put things in, we can work from that. But rather than having people just, everybody just contributing to it at this point, I think it's a little scary. And we didn't have <laughs> editing privileges, so Emily okay, made I a did. copy. And so oh, okay. I can share it back, but I don't sure, know if I have your own. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll close that. Out. We don't need to do that with Fine. everybody here. Yeah. Do this. So, it should be in the email. Andrew, you're going to entertain a yeah. motion to adjourn? I would entertain a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Could we get Google Oops. invites for these? Yeah. Can you what? That would be helpful. A Google invite would be amazing, like two months out. Like, so I just can plan my life. Sure. If it's on my Google calendar, it's real. If it's not and I have to remember it, it's challenging. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think if Christy's putting out a warning, it'd be nothing for an admission. I it's just another warning. <laughs> it's just, I get it. It's just add the Google no, no. invite. And we could literally, I mean, I, I love all these, but okay. all these documents could be like linked to that Google email. invite. Google everything. Yeah, we could have so, our own it's, Google folder. You should have gotten them yeah. all, except for this one. We do as attachments, but if it's literally a calendar invite, every attachment can be linked within that. Got it. For the, and it's Got just it. easier and more efficient in my world. Well, it's like the farm to school thing and people use zoom and i'm like we're like zoom. we're like google everything why are you doing this to me okay did we end up with you were you going to say adjourn we're already gone we did it we did it even though it came out can we go google invite